tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, take a seat. I'm glad you're here. And I'm going to talk about only one parameter today, which I only discovered re recently. It's called the isopalm or isopalm value. Currently it's set to 2.501, that doesn't matter. So let's get started, like always, with a an empty scene. And I'm not going to deliver fancy results, like uh, extremely complex animations or whatever, but just to uh, give you an idea what kind of tools you can use in Maya. And this is just one of them, and it's, uh, I really find it quite cool. So here we have a new scene and what we'll do now is we'll create a curve. This is one of the ma main curve tools. We go to one of the orthogonal windows and I just randomly create points of a curve. And I press enter and then the creation of the curve is finished. And now I can revolve it using this tool. You don't see these blue icons unless you're under modeling here. Go to modeling and then curves and surfaces, not polygon modeling in this case, but curves and surfaces. And here you find the revolve, which is under surfaces revolve as well. So we get this quite interesting object, which is uh, quite boring actually. We go to deform, which is in the same menu set, in the modeling menu set to linear bend and nothing happens. The bend uh, is sitting there straight, but uh, once we raise the curvature, our object gets moved quite a bit, which is quite nice, really. The next step is we select the surface and go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. We don't want it to remember that curve, and now right mouse click, Isopalm. And we select any of them because you can move around on the surface with them anyway. And uh, it doesn't look really selected, but it is. And you go to curves because now we're dealing with curves and we duplicate that surface curve. We could have selected more uh, isopalms, but we only selected one and we duplicate this isopalm. So we have at the exact position of the selected isopalm, we have this curve. And look what we have here, an isopalm value. With the uh, control key and the middle mouse button, you can change the value here interactively. That's what I'm currently doing. And you see that it uh, moves up. And at, well, the value of 9, it sits at the end. And the value of 0, it's at the beginning. And of course, we can animate this, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We start at the bottom with this value, right mouse click, and we set a key. We're at frame number one, and we set a key for the isopalm value, which is zero. Now we go to, well, 120, for example, and we set that value to nine. And now we have this landing up here. When we run this, the animation, this is already quite nice and if you don't want to watch more in this tutorial just stop here because you got the clue already what i want to do now is i want to duplicate this curve in a special way and uh, the special way is edit duplicate special and we need the option box here because we want to duplicate the input graph by default it's, it looks like this, but we want to duplicate the input graph. That means we want to duplicate the animation with this duplicate. And, um, number of copies, well, let's go for 10. Actually 9, so we have 10 all in all. And now you see that uh, the duplicates land here in the outliner, and um, it duplicates the revolve surface as well. So we can actually delete those surfaces or just hide them. Now, now they're hidden. And uh, where are the parameters for the isopalms now? Here in the tabs, we don't find the iso value. 
Well, we can locate it by right mouse clicking here and not showing the DAG objects only, but all objects. And you see down here, curve from surface ISO 1. And this is what we animated. But the ISO 2 is animated in the same way. So we have 10 curves moving up from the bottom of this surface. We select them all and we go to the Windows Animation Editors and the Graph Editor. And in the Graph Editor you actually see all these values here, these values right here. The first one and the second one, they all look the same because they're duplicates. And uh, let's zoom out a little bit because we need space now. And what we'll do is we select this curve, it's the second one, and we move it slightly by pressing the key W. And with the shift key, we move it slightly over here. And we do the same thing here. And we continue like this. hide this surface we need to extend the frame range now because we extended the animation for the rest of the curves so they all start at the very beginning at the bottom and they end all at the top we need even more space here for the animation. If we want to render this, how do we go about it? Well, let's first of all show the DAG objects only because we don't need the ISO parameters now. We've uh, used them all. Uh, we select all the curves which sit at the top right now at the end of the animation. And we go to Arnold because it's a, about rendering now. And we create a curve collector. The curve collector, I did a tutorial about it, the link is in the description. The curve collector collects all the curves and automatically enables rendering for them. This is very elegant, otherwise you would have to select all curves separately and do it one by one. So the curves collector does this job with a width of the curves, with a ribbon, and I prefer thick in this case, it doesn't really make uh, big difference. And now I need a light. I go to Arnold and create a Skydome light. I don't want to see the light in the viewport. That's why I deactivate it here. And I lower the visibility of the camera. That is the basically how the camera sees that light to zero. That means the light looks black, has a black background basically. Now I render the, the scene. And here I have all the curves sitting on top of each other. And here I have them separated quite nicely. I need to select the curve collector. i raise the width just a little bit, 0.3. And I create a ramp for the rings, for the curves, so we can see them better. And they look more fancy. And I think I go for color white right here. So they go from black to white to white. And actually, let's uh, try a blue color here. So in the middle, they are blue. They look like a little bit like a swimming pool. Unhide the surface. And for the surface, you can create a new material, Arnold. And how about a flat? shader, which we make very dark, like this. And now we can see the curves develop on that surface very nicely. 
I show you a rendering which I did with a slightly different shape but very similar shape and to wrap this up you have an ISO value which you can use to animate the position of the curves on that NURBS surface. Of course you can convert the NURBS surface to a polygon and use it in a computer game but the curves are the main tools of NURBS modeling of industrial design and by the way if you haven't seen it before I have um, a 12-part NURBS modeling course on Udemy and Skillshare. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.